The game I wanted to talk about today is Popeye 2 for the original Nintendo Game Boy. Popeye 2, which is the sequel to nothing, because there isn't a Popeye 1 for the Game Boy. There is in Japan, but if they weren't gonna release it in the West, then why not just rename Popeye 2 to Popeye? I love Popeye. The cartoons, the movie, it's all good. So when I first got this game, I had high hopes that it would capture the spirit of the character and his adventures. Released in 1993 in North America, the game was developed by Copia System, the people behind Bing Bing Bingo and Cutie Suzuki no Ringside Angel. But also some genuinely cool stuff like Power Drift, an early arcade kart racing game from Yu Suzuki, the genius behind Outrun, Space Harrier and Shenmue. Anyway, all that to say, let's take a look at Popeye 2, it might just be decent. Or terrible. The game is a 2D action platformer in which you play as Popeye who, as ever, is off to save olive oil from the clutches of Brutus who has kidnapped her once again, as well as a treasure map. The cutscene that opens the game is certainly informative, but man does it take its time. So the game begins and, at first glance, it looks pretty good, kinda like Mario meets DuckTales or something. Popeye's only attack is a punch in which he can break blocks as well as take out enemies. The cool thing here is that you can find cans of spinach inside the blocks and they add up. The more you take, the more powerful your attack becomes. Popeye's arm inflates and can even shoot projectiles, but if you get hit, you lose those powers. But be careful, when you find the cans, they drop out of the screen, so you need to make sure you're ready to grab them, otherwise they're lost forever. You pick up gems along the way, as well as extra lives, clocks for extra time, and stars that make you invincible. Although thinking about it, it's kind of weird that only one of Popeye's arms grows twice as big. It's almost as if he was using his right arm more than the other. Early on, you're mostly walking around killing animals, because a video game without senseless animal cruelty wouldn't make any sense. The first level is pretty easy, as you walk past palm trees and jump around on clouds, punching blocks. Then you're on the ground and things get a bit spikier. Because the setting is much more narrow, you end up getting hit more often, mostly by bats that tend to fly right into you. The first boss you encounter is a snowman with a bow tie and a party hat because... Well, blow me down, I have no freaking idea. It's not even a snow level, what is going on? Well, at least it's super easy to kill, especially if your arm is throwing spinach cans at that point. After each stage, you rescue one of your friends and they politely thank you. There's an underwater level early on, but unlike in a lot of games, it's not too awkward. Then you're on a pirate ship shooting ghosts and skeletons. You can defeat the bosses without the projectiles, but it certainly helps, because then you don't have to get dangerously close to them. So it's always worth powering up just before the end of a level. Later in the game, jumping becomes a bit of a challenge, as you go from rope to rope trying to get to certain hard-to-reach platforms. By using both buttons, you should be able to perform a slightly higher jump and that becomes essential by the time you reach this part. One of the later bosses is a dragon that shoots fireballs and once again it's like, what? In the second half of the game, you get to see some of the same levels, in terms of look at least, which is a bit of a shame as it's always better to keep seeing new stuff as the game continues. Brutus is the final boss, of course, and he's just as easy as the others. During the end credits, the game gives cute nicknames to the staff. Charming Iwazaki, Pretty Yamada... Yeah. All in all, Popeye 2 is pretty much exactly the Popeye game I wanted. A fun, not-too-tough side-scroller that's just enjoyable to play through. It's well made, it looks good, the controls are easy to use, the sound effects are great, especially when you pick up an extra life. The music mostly works, but occasionally can be a little annoying. It speeds up as well as the time starts to run out, which can be stressful. Another cool thing about the game is you can actually link up another Game Boy and play a short multiplayer round with the other player as Brutus. If you like Super Mario Land and Popeye, then this is a game you should probably seek out. I do recommend it. Oh, come on, let's go. Cut.